here's my part two of my tips and tricks guide for the Asus ROG Ally X. So yes, I've already done a full setup guide, an optimization for FPS guide, and even another tips and tricks video, so make sure you go and watch those as well, but this is part two of the tips and tricks. So first of all, I want you to go into settings and disable device encryption. What we're gonna do is go over to settings and then privacy and security, device encryption just here, and you will see device encryption just here, and now mine is off. Now it is on by default, and you wanna turn that off. So what I would say straight away is if you are using your Ally X as your main PC and you've got all your personal files on there and private data and all that kind of stuff, then don't do that step. Leave device encryption on. However, in my opinion, I would just disable it, especially if you are using this for gaming only. What this does is encrypts all your data on your SSD for if the device is stolen, it basically makes it almost impossible for someone to get in and get to your data because there is a passcode that is supplied by Microsoft that you need to then get in, right? The only issue with that is Microsoft don't give you that code easily and it can even lock you out yourself. Even if you're doing like Asus Recovery Cloud or anything like that, you run the risk of actually bricking the drive essentially and then you even yourself can't get into it, which, you know, nobody wants, do they? So I've disabled it because I've got fingerprint like reader and a passcode anyway on there, like a personal thing. And I don't really have any personal data on the device anyway. So there we go. And you're probably thinking, well, why should I disable it? Well, it prolongs the life of your SSD. So that is the main reason. So for me, it's a trade-off. I'd much rather have a greater life expectancy from my SSD and not run the risk of being locked out and bricking the device. The next tip is frame generation that some of you might not know about. Now, this is amazing technology that is coming on leaps and bounds. We're seeing it improve all the time. And essentially, there's, there's different versions. We even have driver-level versions of frame generation here with AFMF supplied by AMD and supported in the command center via Asus as well. Now that is AMD's driver level frame generation, but there's also an app in Steam that I'll do a dedicated video of soon called Lossless Scaling. And within that, it is a paid app though, but within that you can then do frame generation on games that don't support frame generation. Same with AFMF, that's supported on any game essentially. But some games like, let's take, Ghost of Tsushima that has actual frame generation built in. Now, if a game has it built in, that is the best way because it's actually like, you know, the devs have implemented it. And what frame generation is, Andy? Well, come on, tell us what it does. It improves your FPS. It essentially takes two frames and then, you know, adds an extra one or two or three in between those. And then it triples or quadruples or doubles your frame rate from a game. It is incredible. There are some drawbacks like visual artifacting that I've noticed at least in Ghost of Tsushima. And especially if you use AFMF or lossless scaling, then you might have some HUD issues. If you've got a crosshair, for example, it might be a bit flickery and stuff because it can't differentiate between the graphics of the game and like the HUD. Whereas in-game frame generation, like on Ghost of Tsushima, because it's been implemented properly, the HUD won't be affected, but you might get some odd artifacting, but honestly, to be able to play games at much higher FPS, that is a trade-off, and it pretty much makes the longevity of this device much greater, because if you're getting like 25 FPS, stick on frame generation, you might be getting 100 FPS, it's mad. Now, on the back of that, there is an issue, because you're increasing the FPS so much, the VRR screen in your ROG Ally X just here only supports up to 120 FPS. If you go above 120 FPS, right? You will introduce screen tearing, which is what VRR takes away, right? So we don't need V-Sync on because VRR's there. However, if you were running a game and it's at 145 FPS, we're above that 120 FPS cap of the VRR, you will get screen tearing and then that will force you to use V-Sync, which will then introduce latency as well. And we don't, we don't want that, do we? So there is a way around it. Now, what I want you to do is install RTSS, which is River Tuner Statistics Server. Now, I will leave the link in the description. It's a free software, so just download it from the link below, and that's the only one I would recommend that you use. And basically, it brings up this. And the way to see RTSS is like a middleman between the game and the driver. That's how they describe themselves. So you have this running in the background. It uses barely any resources at all, so don't worry about that. And that's going to cap your FPS. 
unlike using something like this, where you go into command center and go, okay, set my FPS to whatever, right? You've got a frame limiter, FPS limiter just there. Don't use that. This is much better. RTSS. If you see anyone talking about that, that is River Tuna Statistics Server. So we don't need to do much here at all. All we need to do is go over to the bit where it says frame rate limit. Like, so you just install this and you do nothing other than go to frame rate limit, which is just there. Now you can see I've capped mine at 117. Now that is actually just for any game, okay? So this is just to make sure that you are using VRR because it's up to 120 FPS, right? So we're capping it just below so that we're definitely within that bracketed window because some games, even like Call of Duty, if you use the right settings, you can get well above 120 FPS and we don't want that because that will introduce tearing. However, I am capping it at 117 here for like native games running at that FPS. If you are using frame generation, which is then going to like double, triple, or quadruple the frame rate, we want to cap the frame rate much lower to the original base frame rate that it's then going to double or triple or quadruple. It sounds complicated, it's not. So let's say we're running a game at 60 and you want to introduce frame generation to get 120 FPS, I want you to cap your frame rate at 58. And what that's going to do is cap the frame generation at 116 FPS so that it doesn't push past that and then lead to tearing. If you are going to, let's say, triple your frame rate, then 120 divided by three is 40. So really you wanna be capping your frame rate at 38 to be below that bracket of 120, right? And finally, if you are using lossless scaling, which can do up to four times boosting of your FPS, right? You wanna cap it at you know, 120 divided by four is 30. So I'd say cap it at 29, and then you're not gonna be above that 120 VRR bracket that will then lead to screen tearing. So the TLDR is cap your frame rate at 117 if you're not using frame generation. That's just going to ensure all games are gonna be below that 120. If you're using frame generation, then you need to divide the 120 by the times that you're going to be doubling or tripling or quadrupling your frame rate and then set that as your base. If you're confused, just re-watch this section or just tell me that I'm an idiot. <laughs> Next up, I want you to go into Armory Crate and then go to Performance just here. Go down to Eco Assist and then what we want to do is make sure Modern Standby Assistant is on and Extreme Standby Mode is on as well. Now, big thank you to the commenter on the tips one for giving me this tip to show you guys. So you can see just here that Modern Standby Assist says that it helps your system enter hibernate mode to save battery power. So I said in tips one, the part one of this, to swap the power button to be hibernate, but actually you don't need that if you use this. I wasn't aware of this, so thanks to the commenter again. So this is really, really cool. So basically when you put your device into sleep to avoid excess battery drain, we will put the system into a hibernate mode if your machine exceeds the power setting beyond a set period of time. I think it's about 30 minutes or something like that. It will then go into hibernate. So sleep will be, you know, you, you go into sleep, you're away for 10 minutes, you come back, you press it, boom, everything's back really quickly. It's in a standby mode. It is draining power in that time. Whereas hibernate is basically like a system shutdown. And then when you bring it back up, all your stuff's still there, but it's, it's slightly quicker than a shutdown down and all your stuff's still open, right? So this is really good because Hibernate does not use any power at all. Standby slash sleep does. So if you're in sleep mode and you think, oh, I just need to go grab a coffee for half an hour and you, you intend to come back, but then you get sidetracked by mowing the lawn or chasing pigeons. I don't know what you're doing. You let me know in the comments. <laughs> then the device is actually gonna go, okay, you're not coming back. I'm going to hibernate and save your battery. Brilliant. Next up, I want you to turn on flip presentation model. Now this sounds incredibly random, but what this does is essentially lets Windows talk to that VRR panel and it was enables VRR with windowed or borderless windowed 
games. So instead of it needing to be full screen or full screen exclusive to take advantage of that VRR, this is just gonna be VRR everywhere, which is exactly what we want. Let me show you how to do it. So first of all, this is actually a Windows thing. So we wanna go down to start. We want to go to settings just here. And then we want to go to system. We want to go to display just there. Then we wanna go down. So we wanna scroll down until you see graphics here. So go to graphics. And then at the top under default settings, there's change default graphic settings. Now here, obviously you've got VRR at the top there. So that should be on by default. And then underneath you've got optimizations for windowed games. Now it says reduce latency and use advanced features in compatible games by using flip presentation model. You may need to restart the game for changes to effect. Now click on and that is going to enable VRR for windowed or borderless windows, like anything like that that's not full screen, VRR will still be working and we absolutely want that. I'm not too sure why that isn't enabled off the bat, but there we go, make sure you turn that on. So this final tip is how to reinstall the AMD software, because if you're like me and had an issue with it and then ended up uninstalling it, thinking it'd be really easy to download again and then not finding it at all, well, I'm gonna save you that pain that I experienced. <laughs> so I had a bug where the overlay just was not working correctly. Anything I did was not working at all. So I just thought, you know what, I'll just, I'll just reinstall the software, right? It'd be, it'd be easy. So I uninstalled it. I went to the Asus website and all the drivers and stuff. No, it's not there. I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. I knew it got updated in the Microsoft Store, so I thought maybe it's just an app there. I searched for it. I couldn't find it whatsoever. So I was like, what's coming on? How do I find it? And I just trolled through Reddit and finally I found the link. <laughs> and so I'm giving you the link here down in the description. So if you end up like me, you can find it. It is on the Microsoft Store, but for some reason, when I've searched for it and I've seen loads of other people complaining about the same thing, searching for it, you just cannot find it. So the link is down below. You literally just click get now, whatever it is, install, and then you go from there and everything works as it should do. It picks it up as if it was, you know, installed natively at the in, originally, right? So this is a really good tip if you're like me that has to uninstall it for whatever reason. You can always find the link down in the description down there. So there you go. I've just saved you. And there we have it. That is part two, not, not four, part two of our tips and tricks video for the Asus ROG Ally X. Please let me know any more tips and tricks down below that you may have found that I've not mentioned yet in any of my guides. And maybe I'll feature them in another tips and tricks video because I'm happy to keep doing these providing that, you know, there's more and more tips and tricks that we could all benefit from. So let me know your favorite tip and trick, even if it's not something I've done yet, you know, educate me too. You know, I'm, I'm just like you guys. I've just got a camera. <laughs> but anyway, let me know if you've enjoyed this video down below, like this video, subscribe, become a member and you can talk to me and AJ in our private discord, right? And you get to see these videos early. And talking of AJ, go and check out our podcast over here and check out part one of the tips and trips, uh, tips and trips. Yeah, that's right. Go take a trip down there and click on this video next. <laughs> Bye.